All right, my question of today is, are you guys bullish on Ripple and or XRP? Comment it down below. The reason I'm asking is I just watched this amazing interview between Brad Garlinghouse and A. Pompliano, and it really goes over a lot of the pain points and questions we've had in the recent months. And in this video, I want to give you a good summary of what they were talking about while also giving a, a broader idea of what I'm seeing Ripple and XRP do. And stuff he's talking about in here is going to be very, very important to know. All right, so stay watching, make sure you watch it all the way through. And we are very, very close to 50,000 subs. Very, very close. So yet again, we're giving away 100 XRP in this video. And all you have to do is make sure you press the like button, subscribe and comment something down below. But in our next video that's gonna be coming out, so in about three hours or so, we're also going to be announcing one giveaway winner or four of 25. I'm not too sure about that just quite yet. Having said that, it is a wonderful interview, guys. And if you have some time left, watch it yourself. Otherwise, just watch this video here because I'm going to guide you guys through with my trusty notes. Now, the video here started out with a little bit of a talk about Ripple moving and Ripple's uh, kind of small future plans. It wasn't too important. But pretty pretty soon here, it came over into the regulatory bodies and the, the biggest issues that Ripple has been facing. They also talk about how many members, there's like 150 that are working with XRP, that's something he literally says, and also the fact that there would most likely be uh, a lot less kind of debate about companies hopping on in, because at this point, a lot of companies they talk to, literally his own words, they don't want to have anything to do with the XRP cryptocurrency is a little bit of a problem. He then pinpointed out that the U.S. is holding back innovation because of one new thing they want to introduce, for example, eight regulatory bodies for ruling over crypto, which would, of course, be impossible. But then the, the question was brought up, is XRP a security, right? And, and is XRP really decentralized and everything uh, a little bit more along those lines? And one of the cool things he then said is, well, if you compare it to Bitcoin and Ethereum, and you kind of take a look at that, he would definitely say yes. And a cool one to know uh, there is that Ripple was once opposed to some changes to the XRP ledger, but it actually still passed, which, yes, is quite a good indication that XRP is decentralized, at least in his opinion. But he, of course, doesn't know how they also um, do it, how, how they are thinking about it, the government, so to speak. Then, however, it went over into a very hefty literally pretty hefty back and forth and discussion about China and how they are arranging these things. He claimed, for example, that China has already won the 5G race uh, and he doesn't want to see that same thing happening here for crypto. And also that China has more than 50% of the mining power for sure. And top four companies have already over four uh, no, over 50% of the mining power. And thus it's a little bit scary. So why say that Bitcoin is completely safe sort of and you know regulated quite properly in a in an easy sense but xrp which is mostly in in the u.s to a certain degree we'll get to that in just a second and just you know a lot more safe in that extent and, and kind of skip out on that one it's kind of strange pompliano disagreed he said the miners there they can't control um or maybe they could control it, but the government can't control it. Brad Garlinghouse said they could, and yada, yada, back and forth, back and forth. Then Ripple said they paid hundreds of millions in taxes, or at least $100 million, which uh, I, I found kind of interesting. Hundreds of million in tax, that's, uh, that's a lot of money. And then we got to a more important and a very good point. Quite far into the interview, though, like very, very far in, it's already talking about that more than 90%, we're looking at 90 to 95% of the customers are not in America, or at least are out of the US. And that point was very important because we were just talking about regulatory bodies, right? We were just talking about all the connections there and everything. And what is important to know is that XRP, uh, if it were to be declared a security, could still operate just fine for a multitude of reasons. One, they could just move to a different place and just operate only outside of the US, right? Which again, would kind of quote unquote suck to kind of think about it. But point two, it won't really matter if the US is not included in this because only 5% of the customers are US anyway. So in the end there, in the, the bigger picture of things, they could fully operate it 
with being in security. And kind of three is they would have to go and ask for the proper licenses to fix everything, which would most likely still work regardless. So the whole security debate is more so a battle of wits and more so a battle of who's going to win the lawsuits that might, you know, come back up here or something like that. But it's not really a question anymore, uh, at least in my mind, whether or not Ripple would fall down if XRP were to be declared a security. Because basically, they would just move to either the UK or Singapore or Japan, and things would most likely be set, because they would just not operate in the US anymore, and boom, they're done. And the simple thing about that, and the cool thing to understand there, uh, at least according to me, is they want to stay there. Once more, they said the US will miss out on hundreds of millions in tax, which they gladly want to pay, and he's a... I don't even know exactly where he's from anymore now. I kind of forgot. I, I think it was Kansas boy, he said in his own words. I'm a Kansas boy, so I want to stay here in the U.S. Yeah, that's also something I'm thinking about, right? That's that's definitely something I'm thinking about. They want to preferably stay in the U.S., but they need that proper playing field or the level playing field that the U.S. is just not giving them. And it really makes me more and more wonder about why not, right? But that is one side to it. I'm still a lot more bullish now, as I said uh, on Ripple, as I think they got their stuff sorted out. You know, they're really good in almost any aspect right now, and there's really nothing you can tell me that's going to change my mind, I think. I'm thinking here, what are the bad sides to Ripple? I can't really name one. The only thing that people can ever say now is not that whole security debate, because that doesn't matter if you start to think about it. If the U.S. sees it as a security, most likely the rest of the world won't, so it's just going to be, you know, the U.S. is going to be excluded. So it's just about the amount of XRP that Ripple has that you can call me out about or, or talk about, but that's basically it. Uh, the security thing was even a bigger issue, but that one is kind of faded out now. So the biggest problem that Ripple had has completely been fixed, and it kind of blew my mind that his his solution and his, his talking was so smooth and so logical, they would just move out, and it's not preferable, but it's not really going to matter at all. It's crazy you start to think about that. Then another cool part, which he explained at the end of the podcast here is mostly talking about how much money they invested. Now, that's something I'm kind of interested in. He said in his own words, Ripple invested hundreds of millions in crypto community, not XRP. OK, he said not XRP, but crypto community, something along those lines. I'm kind of wondering if that is money that is sold from XRP you know, that, that that is XRP being sold and then used or, or how exactly they are spending the money. Like, is Ripple building a lot of other things here we're not seeing? Is Ripple investing in a lot more that is going below the radars or are they just talking about things like MoneyGram that they're funding? Because I don't think so, right? That wouldn't be crypto community. So then it will most likely have to be things like, for example, XRP Labs or like uh, th everything through Spring because that's, I guess, $500 million. So... I mean, yeah, maybe maybe that's what they're talking about, but hmm, it, it kind of got interesting uh, to hear that one. But I think that was all here. I think I've written them all down and we, we went over them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight regulatory parties. I think we went over all of them on XRPL, yet they still passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything we covered. So we can close the book right now. I've tried my best to summarize 35 into about six, seven minutes. Having said that, guys, I'm still pretty damn bullish on all these crypto. Everything is still following the agenda. If we're taking a good look at Bitcoin, it is still following the pattern uh, that we are kind of hoping for. Again, don't think this is necessarily going to happen. This is not by any means trying to tell you that that is. And by the way, this is not financial advice regardless. Uh, this is just a hypothetical scenario. Uh, what I just did is I copied these candles here and put them over. And they were kind of well. You know, the trend is, is kind of similar depending on how you stretch a little bit. I mean, if you take it perfectly to the dot, I think it's still really the same though. And kind of what it points down to or boils down to is some higher prices. And this is just one of the moves for it. On XRP, again, I also covered a couple of these scenarios where this is just part of the bigger move that is happening. I'm still kind of, kind of, kind of thinking about that, right? We just hit level one here. I'm still thinking we fell back down to recover right now, but that is most likely because things are, are just looking like our prediction is becoming correct uh, depending on what this candle is going to be looking like if this one is green even if it's the smallest a little bit or or just like a red one that's very small but still kind of looking to be upwards i think we're still kind of golden right but if we're going to see another red candle go even lower than what we saw right now 
Uh, we either have to adjust our, our time frames a little bit, which still wouldn't matter too much. I mean, anything within this zone is going to be fine. But if we go lower than this level uh, of our start, which I think was right around 23, 23, 26 cents, something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely have to uh, reconsider all talks and all strategies. But as of this point, everything is still within proportion. Everything is still looking fine. It's a healthy correction. Not too worried about it. I'm still looking pretty damn good. And as of this point, again, these are all short-term things for me now. After hearing this talk here, I'm just way more bullish and I'm really even more adamant to start looking for these higher interim goals. Would this happen? I can't tell, right? I don't know for sure. But I'm more adamant to, to look at the bigger picture now since I don't really see anything that can stop Ripple. And by the way, we're forming a pretty interesting channel here. All right, take a good look. Let me quickly zoom in here. I drew them with red lines here to show you what exactly we are trading in. And it's working pretty perfectly on the one hour here. That's kind of kind of scary how good that is happening. It's the second time now in, um, in how many days is this? About three or so that we are in a range. Let me quickly also draw this one for you guys to get you a, a little bit of an idea going. We are in another channel right now where, well, let me, can I put it? No. Can I not draw? There we... What, what am I doing here? I wanted to put in a line, actually. There we go. So Something like this. This was the channel. Uh, we thought it was broken. It continued back on just a, a teeny-weeny bit afterwards, which is also kind of strange. But, wow. Maybe, though, maybe, though, you can say, all right, we actually had a very, very short-term channel. Very, very small here. And from there on, we actually created a downtrend. So like this, which has now already been broken. I mean, I don't know. We didn't actually get even a confirmation candle. We just hit it twice, and we should have hit it three times to confirm. We didn't. So I'm also not really of that opinion, if we were completely honest. But what then is happening here? It's pretty crazy, if you're really asking me honestly here. The bigger picture is all set in stone, though. Uh, and I'm, I'm still hoping that we, because we haven't hit Fibonacci at about 44 cents or so, 40... 44? Was it 44 now? I think it was 44, right? I think it's on the unnamed chart here. Uh, let's see. Unnamed 2, I believe it was on. Maybe it's unnamed 1. Yeah, no, it's unnamed 2 here. I think we might still have to hit here about 45 or just a little bit below that. I don't... No, this one right here at about 44. And since we did not hit that, we actually, you know, bounced back up from there two or three times. We might still have a move here going on. On the contrary... You know, uh, the reason I'm actually saying that we can still move down lower is if this was a, a higher time frame, this is one minute, all right? So this is definitely not trustworthy. If this was a higher time frame, I would say something like, okay, you know, we we, we tried it, we, we came back up, and we fell back down, and so, okay, this is just a completely new move because these might be days and something like that, but no, this is one minute. This is all in the span of a couple of hours, and thus... All that's happening in here is just part of something bigger. So you got to see the bigger picture and go to something like an hourly or so, uh, something like that. And if we zoom in here and, and scroll in, you know, the, the chance of, of going down lower here on this one does look a little bit more apparent. However, it also does look a little bit more scary because if we fall back to this uh, level right now, it kind of looks like we're going to continue a downtrend or something like that. Even though I'm not expecting that to happen, it's going to look more like it. And I think more people will start to get afraid and panic sell. And that is the biggest issue we'll be facing, even though even that, a real downtrend, is is really not on the agenda since we already uh, kind of broke it right here. We could fall down, however, hard though, and again, kind of stay uh, beneath this level. A lot of things are possible right now. But all that I'm saying here is talking about the short term here because all I'm looking for is some good ass buys to get me through the moon because again I'm really looking for these higher prices $14 and stuff is what I'm looking like uh, looking at but $2 here is my first real target I'm really hoping for and uh, at that point I'm thinking about cashing out possibly a little bit how I came to Pompliano by the way is I was first looking at how many trillions can get injected into crypto and over time these are going to be tons of trillions of course he said about $5 trillion into crypto, but that's just the start of something bigger. Uh, we all knew that as well. That's, by the way, what this talk was all about. And uh, if you're wondering about cashing out and everything about those plans, I've actually updated the crypto tracking DustyBC sheet. Let's see, have we already hit 50? 
Ooh, 14 more to go, guys. Very close. Yeah, I um, I updated the sheet here. I think that's a very important addition and cool thing I've changed. What I've done is I've actually decided to change... Uh, let's see here. I've added some some cool things here to the cash out. You can now put in some quantities as well, and it will also show you in percent. I have also added in, I think, this profit here. Um, uh, coins left to sell. There were a couple more things I, I changed. I added this uh, thing where you can put in the crypto yourself by just changing the link here, and you can analyze any crypto. Uh, that's the simplest way to do it. If you just change this one to, for example, XLM, you change the link to XML, uh, XLM, you change this to XLM, everything will be changed, all right? Automatically, everything will uh, work itself out. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, to quickly once more go over why I think this is important is you got to have your cash out prices locked in. And now through all of this, you can also see a couple of other cool things, which is, for example, if this would be your cashing out scheme, Right, this is what you would want to go for if you had had 15,000 XRP in these proportions, you would want to go for it. You can actually see your average sale price of XRP would be about $8.37. And if you have that in the back of your head, then again, this would be your cash out plan with your amount of coins right now. If you then want to calculate how much XRP you would need to end up with a million dollars, you just put in that price and you now know you would need 119,000 XRP to become a millionaire. I also think things like that are pretty fun to add in so you guys get a better intuition of where exactly you are and if your finances are doing good or not. And if you're wondering how to get that, you have to become a channel member or just make the sheet here. I don't think it's that difficult to do. Just look at what I made and try to replicate it for yourself. Uh, it will take you some time, but it's definitely possible. And I, I can save you that time if you become a member. But again, it's not necessary. That's why I keep showing it here so you guys can also just copy it yourself. Uh, just just being a, being a member is something cool but it shouldn't have to be mandatory. We're getting very close to 50 though. I'm very excited about that. But since we didn't hit it in this video, we're gonna be announcing the giveaway winners next vid. So uh, stay subscribed, check it out because that's gonna be our 50K special, even though it is not actually going to be a, a special video at all. It's just another crypto news one, but it is where we hit 50,000 subs though. Or maybe it's gonna be in the middle here when I'm trying to, ooh, that's actually kind of scary, right? It might actually happen while I'm not recording. So I guess I'm going to have to record the video pretty soon after this one. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to miss it.